This SciShow video is brought to you by you. When you buy the SciShow calendar and the SciShow space calendar, that money goes toward the high quality product that you will get to enjoy all year and to the people who made it, who are also the people that made this video. So thank you for supporting SciShow. If you haven't claimed a calendar yet, you can find them for a limited time at complexlycalendars.com. The most abundant animal on Earth is the roundworm, or nematode. We've identified over 30,000 species so far, although there are probably more than a million species that we haven't identified yet. They make up four-fifths of all land animals, so it's not surprising that a lot of insects, plants, and bacteria have adapted to prey on nematodes for nutrients. But none of these worm eaters do it with quite as much style as carnivorous fungi. For starters, it turns out that slurping up nematodes is a key part of fungi getting all of their vitamins and minerals. In particular, nematodes are a great source of nitrogen, which is usually limited in soil and tree bark and needs to be converted into forms that living things can use it, unless you're getting it from something like a nematode, which is why the habit has developed independently in several fungal lineages and each has their own unique way to nosh on nematodes. The most common murder weapon is a true predatory classic toxic substances. Researchers have identified at least 179 nematode-killing toxins. That said, only a few of the fungi that make these toxins are actually using them to hunt and eat nematodes. The fungi that do hunt for nematodes have figured out how to do it with a lot more style. From sticky traps and invasive spores to a microscopic gun, here are three ways that fungi have adapted to destroy nematodes. Now, before you feel too sorry for the nematodes in this story, a little background. Many species of nematodes are endoparasites, meaning that they are a parasite that lives inside of its host. Hookworms are one example. They reproduce in the intestine of humans, dogs, cats, and other animals. Their eggs are then passed from the feces of that first host into the soil where they hatch and can infect a new host through the skin, none of which is pleasant for either host. But what goes around comes around, and there are also many species of fungi that turn endoparasitism right back on the nematodes. All fungi start as spores that eventually germinate into threads of branching filaments called hyphae. And like the roots of a plant, hyphae are what the fungus uses to suck up nutrients. The hyphae are all connected in a network called mycelium. Normally, these spores will germinate where they end up as long as the conditions are right for that species. However, the spores of endoparasitic fungi can't germinate on their own and they need to lie in wait until they find a host, specifically a nematode host. The stationary spores of Drachmeria coniospora attach to the outer covering or cuticle of nematodes. These sticky spores then use a long tube to stab through the cuticle. Other fungi use spores that are swallowed by an unsuspecting worm. After making their way inside, spores can germinate into hyphae, completely overrunning the inside of the nematode and feasting on its contents. Most shockingly, this doesn't kill the nematode right away. Researchers have observed infected nematodes living for up to 24 hours as their insides are colonized or until the hyphae reach its vital organs. Eventually, a network of spore-producing organs burst out from the nematode, which starts the cycle all over again. Think face huggers from Alien but with worms. Most endoparasitic fungi use spores that aren't capable of moving on their own, which is probably a relief to those nematodes. But some of these spores can produce a flagellum, or tiny tail, which means they can wriggle around and chase down their prey. The zoospores of Pythium caudatum can sense and swim after nematodes, and when they catch up to one, they're able to stab their way inside the unsuspecting worm to germinate. Who knew that for some fungi, life begins inside a tiny microscopic worm corpse? While the nematode killing spores are using worm bodies as tiny incubators, there are other fungi that don't depend on worms for reproduction. Some of them just like a snack every now and then. They get most of their nutrients from decaying organic matter, but will prey on worms for a nitrogen fix. And instead of hijacking their prey, these fungi build traps. There are two types of traps that fungi can make, adhesive traps and mechanical traps. Around 380 species of nematode trapping fungi have been discovered. 
These soil-dwelling fungi use special structures that are dispersed throughout the mycelium to trap their prey. Fungi like Arthrobotrys oligospora produce their deadly adhesive traps when they detect the presence of nematodes. To lure in their prey, the traps also produce chemical signals that mimic nematode sex pheromones and food. A. oligospora is the most common nematode trapping fungus in nature, so common that mushroom growers often refer to it as a biological indicator that they may have an infestation of nematodes in the soil. And this fungus makes adhesive traps from an elaborate structure of loops of hyphae that are attached to each other to create a worm-catching web. The web is coated in a sticky combination of proteins and carbohydrates, and once a nematode gets stuck, the web becomes even stickier to make sure its prey can't wiggle free. The sticky traps that fungi build come in all shapes and sizes, like stalks with sticky bulbous ends and long columns. And once the nematodes are caught up in these traps, the fungus gets to work eating its snack. Its hyphae skewer and digest the worms, sucking up those sweet nutrients. Some types of fungi have gone beyond sticky traps for its nematode noshing and evolved a true mechanical trap. Fungi like Arthrobotrys dactyloides form rings made from hyphae that can lasso nematodes. When the fungus senses heat and movement from the worms, it triggers cells in its rings to inflate like balloons and close around them in a vice-like grip, all in just 0.1 seconds. And some fungi are jacks of all trades, making multiple types of traps. Dactylellina haptatilla is a great example as this fungus creates a minefield of both adhesive knobs and rings to grab its dinner. Those poor worms never stood a chance. There's one final way that fungi kill worms that's straight out of science fiction. The fungi can attack the nematodes with weapons. These fungi can grow spiky piercing structures at the end of their hyphae that look truly medieval. They grow towards the nematode where they can damage and penetrate the cuticle, allowing the fungal hyphae to colonize and devour the corpse. The shaggy mane mushroom produces spiny balls that look kind of like playing jacks, specifically the metal ones that stab you if you step on them. Shaggy mane mushrooms make lots of these spikes, which lacerate the nematodes in mass. All those injuries allow the mushroom's toxins to enter the worm, immobilizing and killing it from the inside. And if that's not medieval enough, wine cap mushrooms kill worms with their homegrown version of a flail. The spikes are sharp enough to damage the nematode cuticle, which can then be colonized by the hyphae. Wine cap mushrooms seem to have an edge over shaggy mane mushrooms when it comes to the weapon proficiency. Their flails are five times the size of shaggy mane mushroom spiny traps, and researchers have observed that the flails do more damage too. I know which one I'd prefer in battle, but the strangest and most elaborate special attack device comes from the fungi in the genus Haptoglossa. They can make a gun cell that fires projectiles at nematodes. The gun cell shoots out finger-like tubes that pierce through the nematode cuticle, but instead of shooting toxins or hyphae into this opening, the tubes act as kind of a syringe to inject a small spore inside the nematode where it will later germinate. The whole process lasts less than a second. It's clear that no matter the method they use, these fungi don't mess around when it comes to catching their dinner. So next time you see a cute little mushroom cap sticking up from the dirt or nestled on a little log, know that just under the surface, that mushroom could be hunting down its prey with a gun. All that makes me grateful I'm not a worm. If you're on the hunt for a great winter gift or a calendar for yourself, check out the SciShow and SciShow Space calendars. To complement the infinite topics that SciShow covers, there's a pie-themed calendar that covers the first digits of the magnificent infinite mathematical constant. And to appreciate the celestial body that we're seeing more and more of during the short days and long nights of winter, in the Northern Hemisphere, there's a moon-themed calendar. It shows off moons from all sorts of planets in high-quality photos that you can hang on your wall. You can get yours now for a discount at complexlycalendars.com or the link in the description down below.